want a free Ravnica Allegiance. Preview card? You look like a show host. What? A preview card for Ravnica Allegiance. Sure, what's it gonna cost us? Nothing, like I said. Here, uh, take the card. Thanks, mister. Let me see this. <gasps> Whoa, thanks! I can't wait to show the guys! I'm Phil DeLuca. I'm Shivam Putt. <laughs> and we are Commander in. Mandarin. Thanks for listening, everybody. We put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever talk about three banned <laughs> topics. <laughs> <laughs> At least not where you can hear them. Definitely not where you can hear them. And uh, they are religion and politics and Hearthstone. So if you want to help the show, as Gen puts it, if you want to help us keep on going and growing, you can tell a friend. That's always the best. You can give us a positive review on iTunes or wherever it is you get your podcast from. You can donate to us at our wonderful community at patreon.com slash commander at MTG or commander at MTG.com slash donations if you prefer PayPal. Or you can help us by going to our GoFundMe, search for Commander in and use the C logo. We have a wonderful show lined up for you. But first, we want to wish you a, a very, very happy, happy New Year's. Year. It's 2019, everyone, and we are very happy to start the new year with you, our friends, and by bringing you a brand new preview card given to us by Wizards of the Coast absolutely for free. We did not pay for this preview card. That is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually a really cool card that it I'm is genuinely really cool card. super excited about. I'm super excited about the uh, new set that's going to be coming out, Ravnica Allegiance. And just before we start, I do want to say thank you, Phil. This has been one full year of co-host mm. this wonderful show, and it's been really great. And I look forward to many, many more. And thank you yeah. to all the patrons who've stuck with us this whole time. Yeah, it's it's truly been wonderful shivam and this is the first full calendar year that's what i meant calendar year all my memories of 2018 are about you shivam probably because everything else about 2018 <laughs> would fit under one of our band topics <laughs> <laughs> yes hearthstone released at least three sets last year. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. It's going to be a great year, and we're looking forward to starting it out right. So let's get to it. So we are talking about a brand new card from Ravnica Allegiance. The first Magic the Gathering set for 2019. That's right. And it releases on January 25th, 2019. It has 259 cards in it, 111 commons, 80 uncommons, 53 rares, and 15 mythic rares. Knowing what we know, I guess that would be one mythic rare per guild, probably one mythic rare per monocolor, and then like five randomly miscellaneous mythics. Yeah. But yeah. the card that we have today is not one of those 15. <laughs> when I read the card, I was really expecting that it would be. And then I saw that it had an uncommon set symbol on it. And I was like, wait a second. How is this an uncommon? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I went through similar. I was like, oh, this is a nice rare card. And then I'm, wait, I, I had to rub my eyes. I was like, wait a second. Is that silver? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So what we have for you guys today is Wilderness Reclamation, a three and a green enchantment that is an uncommon that says at the beginning of your end step, Untap all lands you control. And the flavor text is, Walls crack, buildings fall. Always the wilds return. From Domri Raid. You mean the flavor text is, Walls crack, buildings <laughs> fall. Always the wilds return. Oh, God. <laughs> that one's for you, Gen. That one's for you. <laughs> That's two callbacks for Gen. Look at that. This card is absurd. This is completely, completely absurd. Well, it is really good. 
at first I thought this was a guaranteed Simic card, and then I saw the the Domri quote, and I'm like, this can't. I guess this could be a Gruul card. But either way, being able to untap all your lands at the end of your turn is a pretty powerful ability. Yeah. God knows that our format has definitely seen cards that do similar effects not hang around for very long. I was trying to imagine a deck that doesn't need this or can't take advantage of it. It's essentially a deck that is free of all sorts of land shenanigans or doesn't have a lot of mana sinks. Or has nothing to do on anybody else's turn. Yeah, I mean, if you can do something on somebody else's turn, you play this card, right? And even though you only get the the single untap from it, you still get to untap it. <laughs> so here's the thing. This card is not Seedborn Muse, right? It's not untap all permanents you control during each untap step. It's certainly not Prophet of Krufix. Hallowed be her name. Sorry, Shiva, I interrupted you there because I miss Prophet of Krufix so much. I am so mad because when I started really jamming into Commander, I got a Prophet of Krufix with the new promo one. I was ready to go. And then literally a week later, they banned it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but I didn't yeah, didn't build my you know Primeval Titan for Prophet of Krufix deck. <laughs> and it turns out that's not, that's not legal. Yeah, it turns out. I had just been to Japan, and I bought, like, a bunch of Japanese foil profits of Krufix. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what you're not going to be doing? Profiting off of Krufix. Indeed. <laughs> so, and it's certainly not Sword of Feast or Famine, which lets you untap at the, uh, after your combat step. Because those cards would let you, you know, have access to your mana pretty regularly, pretty cleanly. Uh, Wilderness Reclamation lets you have your mana at the end of your turn. So what that means is that, for a green base deck, you can freely tap out to play your big creatures or spam your table full of tokens or do whatever you need to do, put out your giant things in your hand without worrying that you're going to be shielded down when the uh, other players get their turns. Because that's one of the biggest fears in Commander, right? Like, as a green player mainly, it's like, oh, awesome, I'm going to put down, you know, Terastrodon or Craterhoof or something and tap out, like, all nine mana or whatever. And then, next turn, they're like, terror. And because I'm tapped out, I can't do anything. But with Wilderness Reclamation, I will be able to untap, and they'll be like, Terror, and I'll be like, Logic Knot? And they'll be like, oh no, (laughs) you have mana, what do I do? Because, (laughs) that's why I immediately thought this was a Simic card, because it's like, oh, green-blue. If I'm playing green, I can tap out for all my big dudes, and then still be able to leave mana open to be able Mm -hmm. to do bad things to you later. Yep, but it's all about the lands. So, that means that, like, your elves don't untap, your other mana... I mean, it would be hands down broken if it let you tap and tap all your mana producing permanents but it's green you're going to be ramping anyway you're going to have a tunnel land yeah and that pretty much calls for your deck to have plenty of mana sinks right a mana sink is a term for a card that allows you to pour mana into it like spend mana on something and get some benefit the new classic that's running all around a variety of formats right now is walking ballista and shiva you are partial to this one right Walking Ballista is such a great card, especially for things like this where you've got extra mana left over. Yeah. Like, if you untap all your lands at the end of your turn for reactive purposes and they don't do anything you need to react to, then it feels kind of like you wasted your mana. But something like uh, Walking Ballista, which lets you uh, put a 1-1 counter on it for four generic mana, is a great place if you've just got a ton of mana just sitting around at the end right before your turn starts again. And then you can always, you know, remove a counter from it and just start pinging people. I mean, that's why Ballista was a standard all-star. That's why it's a modern all-star and just a fantastic card overall, especially when you've just got infinite mana doing nothing. (laughs) Well, not quite infinite, but I mean, if you have infinite, sure. Absurdly large amounts of mana, right? (laughs) Yeah, because using Walking Ballista as an example, you tap all of your mana. You already have Wilderness Reclamation up on the board, and then you tap all your mana to make Walking Ballista as big as possible. And then on your opponent's turn, or just before your turn, if you still have the mana available, you can pay four to put even more counters or another counter on Walking Ballista. And you're probably doing something with counters, which means you're probably running Hardened Scales as well, since you're in green. And so that four mana gets you at least two. Your hardened scales, your doubling seasons, yeah. all of these just silly counters, matters cards. And from what we hear, Simic in this new set is going to have a ton of things that involve putting and subtracting counters on cards. Yeah, this works really well with the new adapt mechanic. Some other older cards that it works well with 
and of course it's going to be it's going to pivot around green which is of course the best color in commander no argument here <laughs> <laughs> the Corozda guild mage and you'll hear a guild mage a couple of times in the next few minutes that's the golgari one and you can pay three total you know one a black and a green to give target creature plus one plus one and intimidate or you can pay two a black and a green and sacrifice a non-token creature to get a bunch of sapperling tokens that's pretty sweet selesnia guild mage pay four total to Create a sapperling token or pay for it to give creatures you control, creatures you control, plus one, plus one. So if you have an army, Selesnya Guild Mage makes that army real big. Well, it's a good defensive card, right, in this case, because Wilderness Reclamation lets you uh, untap your stuff. So you can Alpha Strike now, then come back, and on their turn, you can still pump and defend. Yeah, you can create a token if you need to. You can... Pump all of your tokens if you have a token army. It's just wonderful. Oh, and then this one surprised you, right? The Zamek Guild Mage? I had totally forgotten about this guy, uh, which has the uh, blue and green at the end of your turn. Uh, this turn, each creature you control enters a battlefield with a plus one, plus one, so that's not necessarily useful. However, the second one, green and a blue, remove a one-one counter from a creature you control and draw a card. So mm -hmm. after having just gone and pumped up your, let's say, walking ballista, you can just start... Uh, popping counters off him on their turn to draw some cards. Yeah. That's pretty silly. This particular card is good because if you have like six mana available, you might be able to create a sapperling and make sure it comes in with a plus one, plus one counter on it. I know that sounds kind of expensive for that, but it, yeah, you know, we're talking about ways to use leftover mana, right? Or with some of the cards even uh, that we're about to talk about. This next one was... Ah, uh... Uh, the Ant Queen. Yeah, <laughs> this is like one of my favorite cards from, I think it was Modern Masters 2, which is just like a random rare that nobody remembers, but uh, 5 5 for 5, which is already super cheap in green, that lets you put out as many green insects as you have mana for, because it says 1 in green, put a 1-1 one, one token. And I'm just imagining the turn where you play Ant Queen, you untap all your lands, and then during their turn you create like 4 insect tokens or whatever, and then you just can create gigantic armies, especially, once again, yeah. if you're playing green and you have any of the token doublers or things that care about creature count. I mean, so turn four, or more likely since it's green, turn three, you play Wilderness Reclamation. The next turn you play Ant Queen, you untap with all of your lands, and then on your opponent's turn, or just before your turn, you create at least at least two 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens. And then you're hitting for seven, and then you can do it again and do it again and do it again. Yeah. Yeah, God, this card is going to have so much combo potential. It is the greenest card. It, it is. <laughs> it certainly is. And it's also going to be a nice target. Oh, yeah. Our card, the Wilderness Reclamation, definitely works with enchantresses. Of course, it's an enchantment. But with this particular card, Mastery of the Unseen, this is one of my favorite cards. Whenever a permanent you control is turned face up, you gain one life for each creature you control. <laughs> That's important. I even forget about that ability entirely, which I know is a terrible mistake because this next one is bonkers. For three and a white, you can manifest the top card of your library. That is crazy. In Enchantress, that's crazy. In Athreos... Right, because Athreos only cares when a creature you own goes to the graveyard. And so if you flip a land <laughs> with Mastery of the Unseen, now you have a 2-2. And when it goes to the graveyard, it's a creature. And then your opponent has to pay the Athreos tax or not. And it goes back into your hand. And so, hey, free land. That is, Yeah, it's just crazy. Because one of the things I, I, I do with Seedborn Muse, like I make sure it's in my Enchantress decks because I'm going to be running Mastery of the Unseen probably. And I'm just doing it so that I can manifest as many things as possible. And this wilderness reclamation is definitely like a, it's a redundant way to do that. If, you know, people murder your seedborn muse because they always do. Yeah. Poor seedborn. Yeah. Wilderness reclamation is definitely going to put a target on your face. So let's be real about that. <laughs> now, if you're going with snake tribal, as I know, I, I have at least once after Casedo Orochi Archmage was released. That's the uh, little 2-2 snake wizard that says, for green and blue, target creature can't be blocked this turn, which on your opponent's turn doesn't really matter if you're defending. And then if that creature is a snake, which of course Casedo is, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Your Casedo can like 
block out of nowhere and murder something on the ground. Like I've seen it kill a terastodon out of <laughs> that is that's silly. It is really silly. It is yeah, really so silly. I think the the thing we're getting here is that wilderness reclamation basically makes your green deck so much stronger just because it gives you so many more options in which ways to defend yourself. Especially yeah. if you're playing green with a friend, right? Like green with a different color that lets you have more reactive spells, lets you kind of mitigate the green problem of like, mm-hmm. oh, I tapped out to put a thing. Whoops. Is it possible that this card actually makes your green decks more green? How can it be more green? This is the greenest <laughs> green that it can be. <laughs> no, I mean, because it doubles down on your lands, basically. It makes them so much more effective. Oh, yeah, dude. I love it. I I am fully, fully in love with this card. Like, this is everything I want to do. And we have two more Mana Sinks I wanted to cover just really quickly. Uh, one was Dawn Glare Invoker, the uh, one from mm. the uh, Rise of the Eldrazi and other places. That's a really good one. Which is a 2-1 flying creature, but it's got a colorless ability for eight colorless mana. Tap all creatures target player controls. So, at <laughs> like you tap out, you put your thing out, and you're like, uh-oh, they're going to alpha strike me because maybe they had like a Thalia in play that tapped out all my creatures that come into play. Um well, no, now you just go untap your land to the end of your turn. After their untap step, you tap down their entire board and then they can't kill you. It gives you kind of like a fog or like a, a bit of a reprieve. Yeah. What you can also do with this is it's a very political maneuver. Oh, yes. <laughs> if you have three siege states out, right, where everybody has a full board and isn't quite sure how to attack in, you can always open somebody for business there. Just boom. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you say that. You're like, grand opening, buddy. Wait, wait, no, no. <laughs> and finally, the greatest card to be printed in the past year. <laughs> Probably the best card ever printed in the history of Magic. Slimefoot the Stowaway. Yeah. For one, a black and a green. Who says when a sapperling you control dies, like say the sapperlings you created with all the guild mages you just had, Slimefoot deals one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. But for four colorless mana, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Oh my god, Wilderness Reclamation in Dominaria Limited would have been absurd. <laughs> On my turn, I'm going to make a bunch of sapperlings. On your turn, I'm going to make a bunch of sapperlings. Hey, it's a sapperling party. And then I'm just going to eat them all and like ping you to death. This is so great. This card is going to be so much fun if it yeah, makes it, it around the table. Yeah, if it makes it around the table, they've allowed you to do it twice, which is kind of silly. Never going to happen. Just saying, people. But it's an exciting thought. Uh, this card is cool. I like this Crossan a lot. Crossan Grip is uh, this card's enemy because somebody is like, Crossan Grip that. And then you're like, I'm going to activate. And they're like, no, you're not. Yeah, about that. <laughs> or any of those exile target cards. It's like, uh, why you got to be a fun killer? So <laughs> we were doing this research and Shivam stumbled on this wonderful link. We will include it in the show notes and it'll be on screen right now as well. There's a, a website called smileylitch.com and they have an activated visual page where it's just a list of all the cards printed so far. I guess most of them that have an activated ability or can be untapped easily enough through an activated ability. Yeah. Moreover, an activated ability that does not require tapping the creature. So it's like a list of mana sinks, basically. And I was like, I've never found this page before. This is remarkable. It was really, yeah. really cool. And it's just like, wow, this is something that like, I don't know, maybe we should suggest to Scryfall to make a, a list of mana sinks or something. But this is such a useful resource. Yeah. Now, we've just given you a list of like a bunch of mana sinks of places you could use this mana. But one of the things that really shines about Wilderness Reclamation is that this card is made to offset the penalty of tapping out. We keep bringing that up. Now, one of the things is there's a bunch of cards that you can use that aren't just reactive, like that let you actually use this mana as if it was your own turn. I'm talking about Commander All-Stars, Vidalkan Ori, Winding Canyons, and Alchemist Refuge. These are all cards that, for a small cost, or in the case of the Ori, no cost, let you cast your creatures or non-land cards as though they had flash. When you untap all your mana at the end of your turn, these cards give you a second turn. Basically, <laughs> lets you have a full arsenal available to you on somebody else's turn. That is insane. That is just completely bonkers with this. Like, you yeah. could surprise somebody with a crater hoof. I mean, you may not want to, 
But like in the case that you need to like defend and they're going to alpha strike and they've got a whole bunch of dudes who have trample and you just pump up your entire team and eat theirs. It's pretty incredible. And I mean, I don't know if you happen to be playing blue and you blink your crater hoof next turn and do it again. It's just the ability to have all of your mana available and still be able to play your turn yeah. cannot be underestimated. We jump through so many hoops just to be able to untap, like, even one land if it's something like a Gaia's Cradle or uh, Itlamok, that's it. And this is giving it to us, and all we need is some way to use all that mana on our opponent's turn, and we're in. These three cards, this was a good find, Shivam. This is, this is perfect. Now, uh, Winding Canyons is part of the reserve list, so uh, you'll have to you'll have to get that while it's still only uh, eighteen dollars right now. And Vidalcan Ori, of course, is made popular by the Command Zone. Pick up a bunch of Alchemist Refuge. <laughs> Ori had been reprinted a handful of times, so it's not too hard to get. And obviously, uh, Alchemist Refuge is better than Winding Canyons, but Winding Canyons, like I found one in my collection from the old days, right? So maybe you're lucky and have one in your collection too. I'm not going to presume. But it's great. When you say it's been printed a handful of times, you mean twice. That's a handful. Look, I play white and red, okay? My hands are very small. <laughs> <laughs> now, you have a, a couple of random combos that just jumped out at you. Yeah, you? like I had one extra combo that I wanted to just kind of wrap with. That was uh, when I was looking at this card and thinking about the sort of things I could do in Magical Christmas Land, I realized that one of my favorite cards that I haven't been able to put into a deck is uh, Mana Reflection, which is the fixed Mana Flare, which is if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice that much mana instead, which mm. let's say a land that tapped for mana, maybe. And then Helix Pinnacle, which is one of my favorite alt win conditions, an enchantment for one green that has Shroud that says X, put X tower counters on Helix Pinnacle. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. So if I'm just pouring all my mana into the Helix Pinnacle with Mana Reflection and have something like a Doubling Season or Hardened Scales or any number of these add an extra counter when you add a counter tab deals, you can just kind of go crazy with this. In an Omnath deck, like old mono green Omnath, you can just win and it's silly and it's fun. <laughs> it is magical Christmas land because people will try to like ruin your day. But I might actually just brew this deck up for giggles because it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen Helix Pinnacle in both Omnath, Locus of Mana, and uh, Krufix decks, right? Because you end up with so much extra mana that you can usually just pour it into Helix Pinnacle and win it after you know four turns. Exactly. The problem is you have to you have to be alive for four turns, <laughs> right? So the other neat thing about this card, Wilderness Reclamation, is it's a uh, it's a triggered ability, so. At the beginning of your next end step, untap all lands you control. And so if you have some way to untap, like Seedborn Muse, for example, at each of your opponent's untap steps, you can untap everything at the beginning of your end step, tap all of those lands to use the mana sinks, and then the next turn when your opponent's turn ah. begins, untap with Seedborn. <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> that is silly. That it's kind of dirty. Really, really dirty, man. That is yeah, not yeah. cool at all. And if you have your mana reflection out or a or a mana flare, oh, mm. <laughs> ah, I'm in a good place. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be pulling Simic for my pre-release. Not going to lie, I want to do yeah, this. Yeah. This is going to be great. Well, this is a gruel card, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. this is a great. But it's not watermarked gruel. It doesn't feel gruel. Maybe it is, but it doesn't feel gruel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, fe it does feel base green, so it could be gruel, it could be Simic. I could even see this in a Selesnya deck working really well. You know, tap out, make all your... T oh my god. Yeah. In a Selesnya yeah. deck, you tap out all your things, you tap your soldiers to make more soldiers, march to the multitudes, then next turn you untap all your lands, and... Ah, uh, Christmas land. <laughs> <sighs> it's a good place to live, Phil. Yeah, it really is. So, listeners... Tell us how you are going to use Wilderness Reclamation. I mean, it's not a super duper card. Like, it's not hideously broken. I think this is a good utility card that'll find its way into most decks that have green in it. Yeah, you know where I'm going to try to use Wilderness Reclamation, Phil? Where? I'm going to try to use this at the Loading Ready Run pre-pre-release, which I am going to be a part of. That's right. Yeah, so all of you out there who have wanted to watch me play Magic and see me struggle and fail in front of thousands and thousands of viewers can tune in to the Loading Ready Run stream on January the 11th 
a Friday, the week before the pre-release, to watch me and a couple of other people sit and just jam Ravnica Allegiance for the first time. It's yeah. going to be a blast, and I cannot wait. Yeah, super cool. So you're going to end up, hopefully, with a Wilderness Reclamation and be on camera. Oh, I'm going to do everything I can to make all the mana on your turn. Oh, awesome. Well... Listeners, you rock. Thank you for hanging out with us this long, and we hope that you've enjoyed the card and the show as much as we did. You must tune in and watch Shivam on the pre-pre-release. That's going to be awesome! It's going to be great. And he's going to come away with whatever the top prize is. <laughs> My dignity and... Uh, His dignity. A lot of fun. Yes. Now, if you are looking at spoilers this season we actually made a recommendation to scryfall and they started adding the people who preview cards to their preview pages so go take a look at that scryfall is now doing previews you can look at a card and then immediately start searching for all the cards that have synergies with it so we're not sponsored by them we just love using them. yes and once again special thanks to our patrons who show their support by donating to us so we can keep on going and growing Thanks again. Three callbacks this episode. <laughs> and don't forget to visit us on patreon.com slash commander and MTG or commander and slash donations or our GoFundMe where you should search for the podcast name and use the one with the C logo. You can reach us by going to our website, commander and Our email is cast at commander and you can find us on all of the social medias by searching for Commander and MTG Podcast. This episode was edited by David Mitchell. Our theme song was created for the podcast by Nate Burgess. Our logo was created for the podcast by Mr. Picto with assistance from Kelly DeLuca. You can find more art from Mr. Picto by going to mrpicto.co.uk. Special thanks to Tech Wiz's Jesse Thompson and Graham Frank, and to Justin for the server space. Commander and MTG Podcast is unofficial fan content permitted under the fan content policy. It has not been approved or endorsed by Wizards. Portions of the materials used are property of Wizards of the Coast. Copyright Wizards of the Coast, LLC. Special thanks to Mike Condon, editor of the Brothers War Podcast, for the guitar version of our theme song. Shivam, you love this card so much. You got to take us out. Commander. Super <laughs> sweet. Totally awesome. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. Commander. We might be tapped out now, but we won't be tapped out at the end of our turn. <laughs> 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 I couldn't help it. it just oh, came. that's a that's a good one.